Welcome to another Pro Tools tutorial. In this video, we're going to be having a look at how to use outboard hardware inside a Pro Tools session. So the two aspects of this which I want to have a look at are firstly, using hardware as an insert in Pro Tools, and secondly, using outboard effects from Ascend in Pro Tools and returning those effects back into an auxiliary track within the software. So firstly, let's talk about the inserts. So I'm going to go to Setup and I.O. And on the system which I'm using, I have an Avid HD Omni interface. And as you can see here, in my setup, I've currently got eight outputs visible in the output window, which are ADAT outputs one to eight. So let's say, for example, you have a hardware EQ or compressor, which you'd like to use in your Pro Tools session. Well, firstly, let's have a look at the insert tab. And once again here, you can see that all of my currently available outputs are shown. So in my particular setup, I'm using outputs 1 and 2 to go via a digital desk to the monitors, and outputs 3 to 8 are not actually in use at the moment. So output 3 is what I've used as one of the inserts. And let me just talk a little bit about how this works. So I'm actually going to show you the back panel of another Avid interface, which is the old 003 rack. So firstly, in order to connect your outboard gear, you're going to need at least one spare output and one spare input. So say for example on this interface, we won't use an output 5, we would connect output 5 into our compressor or EQ input, and then you would take the output of that device and plug it into the corresponding input, so input 5. So if you go out of 5, you go back into 5. If you wanted to use 6, come out of 6, go back into 6, and so on. So in my case, I'm going to use number 3. And the way that I've actually got this configured, output 3 goes into a hardware channel strip, and the output of that channel strip goes back into input 3 on the interface. So firstly, let's take a quick listen to the track which we're going to be using. This is largely unmixed, but as you can see, there's a number of plugins which have been put there as a, a bit of a monitor mix. It's hard not to feel the pull of shame when you're in command. So we won't waste time playing through that track, but um, there are effects on there already. So I think we'll take the vocal as an example here. And uh, it does have reverb on it, but I'll just bypass that. So we'll start off with a completely dry vocal. It's hard not to feel the pull of shame. And I think I'll also take off this compressor. So it's pretty much a clean start. And so now that we have our hardware connected, if we go to the inserts tab, ordinarily we would choose a plugin. But you'll also notice at the bottom of this window that we also have I.O. 1 and 2 are highlighted in yellow, meaning that they're currently in use by something in the session. 3 to 8 are in white, so I'm not using those yet. If I select number 3, because of the way I've got this configured, we should probably hear the signal still coming through. And it might not be evident at the moment watching this video, but that is actually going through my outboard channel strip. So if I play this, and uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, you won't be able to see this, but on the outboard gear, I'm just going to do a quick high frequency boost. It's hard not to feel the pull of shame when you're in command. So you can hear the effects of that there. I also have, um, as part of this same channel strip, and I'm just trying to select it at the moment, I also have uh, a compressor. Let's see if we can get some results from that. It's hard not to feel the pull of shame. I might just go a little bit over the top so you can hear it quite when clearly. You're in so we've currently got a ratio of 2.5 to 1. Let's to hit it quite hard with 10 to 1. I'll bring the threshold down. You can probably hear that acting. I mean, I've not get the, got the settings quite right. And I'll just compensate the output gain. Don't forget, you can't see this because I'm doing this on the outboard the hardware. Okay, let's just compare that. If I, What you'll notice is you won't be able to bypass this in the normal way. If I try and bypass it by holding down the command key, it tells me that the selected insert does not support bypass. So you actually have to completely make it inactive. So to do that, hold down control and command, click on it. And now we'll be hearing it. It won't be sending the signal out at all. It's hard not to feel the pull of shame. So there it is without the outboard compression. When you're in and then here it is with. It's hard not to feel the pull. So that's fine, it's working. Uh, one thing you might want to do is give it a name. At the moment it's just called A3. 
if I right click on this, I can choose rename. Some people would go to the IO setup. It's a bit of a lengthy thing to do because you've got to click on setup, click on IO, change the name, click OK. You can accomplish the same thing just by clicking uh, the insert itself, choose rename. And in this case, my outboard gear is actually a Yamaha 01V digital desk. So I'm just going to call that 01V96. And then you can see that it appears there. So I know that my insert is the 01V96. So that's hardware inserts. Now let's take a look at sends to effects such as reverbs. And so on this track, I'm going to create a send. Ordinarily, you would probably create a send to an internal bus, which would come back on an auxiliary. Or you might send it straight to a track if you've already created one. But you'll see that there's also an output option and all available hardware outputs will also be displayed here. So if I choose ADAT5 and the way that I've configured my system, hardware output 5 goes into an external reverb. Let me just show you this graphically. It might be a little bit easier. So output 5 goes into your reverb. The stereo output from your reverb comes back on whichever input pair you've got spare. So 7 and 8 in my case. So going back to Pro Tools, let's just rename ADAP5. So right click and rename. I'm going to call this Hardware Verb. And if I increase this, that's sending, but you can't hear anything at the moment because we actually need to return the signal. And so I can see on my Hardware Reverb that it's getting there. But in order for Pro Tools to actually use that, we need to create a stereo auxiliary input. I might solo safe this by cl command clicking on the solo button. And then I'll set the inputs to whichever input I physically got that hardware reverb connected. So seven and eight. And then I might just rename this. So if I right click it, rename. And in my case, it's the 01V96 reverb. So it's the one built into the desk. Now let's see if that's working. It's hard not to feel the so it is. Of shame so that's no reverb. And then this increases the send, which goes out of the physical output. It's going through the desk. It's hard to hear what the people say with their head in the sand. So I'll just call this Fox Verb. And there it is. So it's actually quite straightforward to use outboard hardware inside Pro Tools. It's just a matter of making sure that you make the physical connections correctly and that you've got your I.O. setup configured correctly. I hope this video has been useful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you again next time.